morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's Dr. Jan Fortman with Relationship Matters TV. I hope all of you are having a beautifully blessed morning, afternoon, or evening. Before I get started, I want to do just a little tribute to our veterans. Uh, veterans Day is coming up soon, and um, I want to thank all all of you out there who uh, have uh, just given yourselves to the service of our country. And uh, so I just want to do a little something before we get started. From right to left and every angle in between know what I mean in this day and age. So many seem like they're lost inside a world and held captive in a dream. A glimpse of mediocrity, take one for the team. And even though this path is long and this place is unforeseen, gotta keep your feet moving, filling spaces in between, seeing places in your dreams. If you complacent by your means, by all means go back to sleep. Uh, the path is steep. There's no rest for the weary. If you intend to reach peaks, it gets deep. Come on, it's infinite. We still climb. I mean, yes, yes, y'all, and thanks for the positive vibes, but I still got a mountain to climb, just take it one step at a time, I'm gonna yo. walk till I fall, gonna ride till I die, I'll never give in, yo, if I wanna survive, not gonna swallow my pride, I'll never give up, cause when it's all said and done, is what I've done enough, I push myself to the edge, I push myself to the brink, is the toil I'm worth it, it makes me stop and think, but through the mud and the mire, the joy and the strife, no one can claim that I didn't live, all of this beautiful life. Again, thank you for your service. I have to thank my husband. Thank you for your service, Keith. <laughs> so, I got a guest today that I met in Palm Beach, Florida. And he is such a delight. So, I'm going to give you just the, just the, like a little preview of what we're going to be talking about. Hello, Matt. Hello, Jan. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm very excited to be here today. And I'm excited, excited for you to be here. So let me give uh, my audience just a little background. So my goddaughter and I were in uh, Palm Beach, Florida, and we were at a networking event. And um, so this young man here, Matt, was sitting uh, well, it was a man sitting in between us. And I was listening to what he was telling uh, this man about his wife and um, his wife's illnesses. But later on, my goddaughter and I were uh, by a pool. And uh, so I'm trying to take a selfie. And I'm like, who is this man back there? <laughs> I'm trying to take a selfie. I wish he would move because they can't see the scenery. <laughs> And so he came around, he sat down, and we had this wonderful, glorious, marvelous conversation. And uh, it was like that we have become simpatico. We are friends. And he is from Australia. He is Matt Riemann. So now I'm going to read a little bit. He's got so much in his bio, but I'm going to read a little bit. Okay. He is a visionary at the intersection of consciousness, human evolution, and transformational leadership. Uh, let's see. His life is dedicated to a profound calling, encapsulating his vision and mission to guide humanity back to its inherent truth. He consults with the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and multiple, multiple, multiple governments all around the world about precision health 
and Future Medicine and AI, which I really, really, really want to talk about. Uh, he's the founder, and I hope I pronounced this right, but you can uh, correct me. It's Shay or Shy S H E A I, which is a revolutionary digital platform that leverages artificial intelligence to deliver real time precision health via your smartphone. He has this goal of eradicating the world of pain and chronic illness by 2050. I don't know if I'll still be here, but anyway, maybe I will. Oh, you know what? Oh, extension of life. Oh, okay. And he was blessed with supernatural gifts that he demonstrated uh, to us. And you know, I'm going to ask you about this later. Uh, to uh, my go my goddaughter and I. But anyway, he's a speaker, he's an author, he's an educator, and he's a mentor, and he is none other than Matt Riemann. And <laughs> thank you so much for the great introduction. And you got it right, Shay, S-H-A-E, Shay.ai is the technology that we've been working on for a very long time now. And and uh, some really exciting things I'm looking forward to sharing more about in this conversation. So again, thank you for the, for the incredible introduction. And it was an absolute honor to meet you and your goddaughter in Florida. And th wait a minute. And thank you. Good day. <laughs> Good day, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> That's Australian people for, for I've been I've been studying a little bit. <laughs> I'm to know, how do you say hello? Good day. <laughs> so, Matt, this is the this is the question that I want to ask you. You are a health futurist. So explain to us, number one, what motivated you to be a health futurist and what it is. That's a good question, Jan. Thank you. So Probably the best way to answer that question is to just share a little bit about me. So I discovered maybe 20, 25 years ago that I had these gifts and abilities that uh, I couldn't really explain. I grew up in science and medicine. That's my background. I've got a bachelor and master's in applied human sciences. I taught doctors in biology, biochemistry, and uh, many other different med medicinal aspects for about 12 or 13 years. I was a university lecturer at a few universities in Australia and one overseas in the US for a number of years, uh, almost 10 years or a bit over 10 years. And um, my background is in science and medicine, but I've been able to see things and hear things and understand things that don't really make any sense scientifically. And that's been a really interesting part of my journey. And as part of that, I've been shown lots of things like visions and other things that uh, have many of those that have come to fruition already along my journey and many I believe to come. And so I think uh, I often say I get to cheat a little bit. I get to see little bits of what's coming in the future and uh, able to share that with people to help make decisions and, and help navigate uh, whether it's individuals on their health journey or you know, a larger group of people with the community organisations or nations where I consult governments about some of the things that uh, might be great choices about what's coming ahead and how to navigate that successfully to keep everybody healthy and, and happy. So... Now, you said something about eradicating um, uh, chronic diseases and pain. You see that in, in the future? I definitely see it in the future. In fact, I believe that that's the reason why I'm on the planet at this particular point in time, Jan. I feel like that's my purpose. And I, I wake up every day super inspired and driven to just work as hard and as much as I can on, on trying to achieve that. And collaborating with incredible minds and hearts and spirits from all over the world to, to collaborate work on that, uh, that goal. So I feel like we've got the science, the medicine and the technology available today to be able to achieve that. And I feel like over the next few decades, it's still got a few decades to go, almost 30 years, I feel like we can get close to achieving that. So uh, that's what drives me. And, and I really believe that uh, understanding people in the ways that we are now, where we can understand the physical body in a very detailed way and and I'll share a little bit about some of the artificial intelligence that's helping us do that and that we've developed over time. Uh, but also understanding not just the physical body, but also our minds and how our minds work uh, to be able to have very big contributions towards disease states, not just mental health, but also physical health and our wellness. And also to understand more about our spiritual journeys and, and how they all intertwine together and how we can 
be in a state of of, uh, of ease versus dis-ease or a state of uh, you know, of suffering versus you know what some might call enlightenment so i believe it's a it's an interesting journey ahead for all of us with humanity but we've got some really great starting points to work from and i feel like there's a lot of great people on the planet doing really great things at this point in time so do you have a pushback uh from what you're doing from pharmaceuticals interestingly pharma enough no companies. it's a question i get a lot actually and, and interestingly enough the pharmaceutical companies um there's an interesting take on that and i'll share that because they started out doing the right thing and most people forget about that they started out saying well there's issues in the body that we've you know, many decades ago uh, understood the technology about detect these things at a micro level in our cells to say here's something inside of someone's cell that's not functioning properly not working properly and we could actually label that and detect that maybe it was a vitamin or a mineral or um, some other um, catalyst that was there that was dysfunctioning at the time and bright, bright minds and brilliant minds had the idea to say well imagine if we could replicate that and send that down to that cell or that particular point in the body to better help that and to reestablish that and restore that because the body stopped producing that pathway or that that substance itself properly and so the intentions originally were very very pure and were able to be very effective and this is back from you know back in the early stages where um, they saved you know tens of millions of lives with various vaccines and things back in the, the early stages quite a bit different to the political conversation about vaccines we have today but everything started off with pure intentions and to help people and I think just along the way, there was kind of business that got involved and, and uh, there's money and shareholders that kind of drive everyone doing everything right now in pharma and across the board with other things. But I think where pharma is at the moment that they, yes, they make money what they do and that is the driving uh, factor for them because they have shareholders, I, I acknowledge that. But there's also the fact that it drives them to want to actually help people and solve a problem. And so what we're talking about with them is solving the problem through understanding about personalization and precision. So we're saying, Imagine if we could help Jan understand exactly what's going on for her, exactly the deficiency she might be having or someone else might be having if they had chronic disease or had you know, a rare form of something that was incurable. Imagine if we could understand and pinpoint exactly what that was for Jan or for Matt or somebody else and be able to have something very, very targeted and specific to be able to address that for that person at that time and then not have to take that forever but have that as an intervention that's there that can be helpful. And that's the concept around precision medicine where we can really understand unique individuals, their exact needs, and have um, whether that's pharma that contributes towards having a role in that or not, or whether that's done through a natural means. The, the fact is that there's actually people that need specific things at certain times on their journey. And uh, I believe pharma can play a really great role in that. And the more progressive pharma companies have really big innovation arms now, and they're very interested in preventative health conversations, very interested in digital health conversations, to try and look at that part of the market too. Yes, they're driven by seeing how they can make money from that as well, of course, um, but they're actually moving towards a really good thing in that as well as uh, the traditional means that's there. So it's an interesting conversation, but I'm, it's not all doom and gloom and all bad guys out there. I think everybody's ultimately trying to solve a problem, which is people have issues and they need to solve them. Um, and yeah, of course, unfortunately in the world these days, everybody is making their money to, to do what they do, but that's just, I think, part and parcel of where we are in life right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, that just popped in, in into my head because I thought, you know, uh, now when when you talk about well individualization, really of medicine, so to speak, or or cures. I mean, there are millions of people in the world, <laughs> and if so, if you think of, it seems to be difficult for to me to to uh, fathom that that it will because i'm not a futurist <laughs> that it will it can be where you know if i have a certain health issue and the other person and, and a million other people have different health issues that that you can i guess individualize everything but but so you know i it's hard for me to kind of fathom that, but I want to go all the way back to if you are doing this, if 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 you can do this, when you start, maybe when the child was first born to see what the heck is going on in their body, if they're predisposed, so to speak, to something other. 
So Jan, that's why you are who you are, the genius, because uh, you're right on the money there. And it's interesting because we started out in science and medicine. And when I say we, I refer to a large collaboration of, of doctors and scientists that really just want to change the world and impact humanity in a, a really incredible way. And we started out to solve the problem of medicine, like through precision medicine to say, you know, what, you know, where do we even start here? And to your, your question about it's almost hard to fathom, it is to start with. But we went through, we've done this for almost or a bit over 20 years, actually. And uh, we've gone through and done a lot of studies on a lot of people. Um, this technology we're talking about today is already live in 140 countries. And we did extensive testing over many, many years to actually measure people and see what what differences or what similarities there were in different people. And that's from external body as well as internal metrics that were there. So, for example, we're interested to see how Jan looks, um, you know, the colour of her eyes, the colour of her hair, the colour of her skin, her shape and size of her head, of her neck, the distance between her lips and her nose and her cheekbones and um, you know, her finger length and moles and freckles and all these different things, but also what's happening in her bloods, in her hormones, in her SNPs, in her brain activity. Lots of different things that we've collected a lot of data on over all the years to try and answer how individual is somebody's health. And so we started off with adults, of course, in medicine, and uh, and we've been now on the journey to to get this to an amazing place where we've I think I might have mentioned to you when we we're talking we've just finished testing this on 150,000 people over the last five years, and we're now at the place where a technology we can actually use your smartphone camera to scan your body on the outside to understand your health on the inside. So really incredible technology that's able to support the journey for adults to help with understanding about their health, about their deficiencies. And just from a smartphone scan now, we understand about deficiencies in vitamins or minerals or hormones that are most dominant or brain regions that are most active. This is just with a smartphone camera, no invasive tests or anything like that at all. So really powerful uh, potential with technology to be able to help us understand that. But we started out doing this with adults and in medicine. Uh, and along the way, I might add, too, that we've we've been able to show over the last five years that we've shown reversal in diabetes, reversal in heart disease, reversal in obesity. Uh, we've shown 86% improvement in mental health. That's for stress, anxiety, and depression. And this is all just with a smartphone with an AI for artificial intelligence. No doctor, no health coach. So incredibly powerful uh, results that we're seeing and health outcomes and changes that we're seeing with technology so we're very excited and very proud of what we've been able to achieve with adults in medicine, but you're right on the money because our vision and our driving force is much greater than a product. Uh, we set out there to say, how are we going to actually achieve the world, you know, essentially, and how do we end suffering? Very, very big conversation, almost sounds unbelievable, and many people along the way have told us that. Um, it's great that there's a lot more people standing up, having that conversation and then agreeing that it's possible now too. But we sat here and said, well, you're exactly right, Jan. It actually starts when we're younger because a lot of the problems that we have, and I'm sure that you talk about on this show, with our relationships, with our communication, with the breakdowns, the emotional trauma that we have when we're kids with our parents and all these sorts of things that add up to often the physical disease that we have or the disease in our body often is is uh, incorporated or, or triggered or started with, through things in our mind and our experience of the world. Um, interesting enough, our genetics play a role and our mind plays a role. So we have these both worlds that are here, which we'll talk about a little bit about today. Um, but we are there. And so the problem, if we're going to solve this and going to save you know, us from ourselves, is we've got to start when we're kids. We have to understand who we are. And so we're actually, to answer your question, we've been working really hard for a number of years. Um, so almost 10 years we've been working on kids. And we're now at the point where we can actually understand, we're up, up to the point where we're at two-year-old, we can be very accurate with actually using a smartphone to scan a body and we can make predictions on the hormones and the physiology that's happening inside of a body at that age We make predictions on what's going to cause stress or the stressors of the baby that's there and the specific environments that they need. And we've been applying this now to, to kids as they age um, up to 18 years old. And we've now been able to actually use this to extrapolate very, very powerful information about learning styles and learning methods and learning environments that are optimal for each unique child and each unique brain that's there and also the behavior and the behavior spectrums so we can now actually uh, just take a photo of it or to take a scan of a, a child to understand about where, how they're going to learn how they're best going to learn are they visual are they kinesthetic are they auditory uh, what's their behavior gonna look like if they're in balance or out of balance and we actually have this technology uh, right now and live with teachers and educators in schools and we have this from early learning centers from kids two years old and up we have it in primary schools we have it in secondary schools and now we've just got it in tertiary educations and this is all over the world now um, that this is uh, rolling out. So it's very, very exciting. And we're looking to solve that problem to say, how do we help 
us when we're younger, how do we understand what we need? Not to control, not to, to put in a box by any means. It's actually the opposite to say, imagine if as a parent, we had the insights or the data to understand what our unique child needs. We don't know what specifically their body is asking for to feed. We don't know specifically the way that they need to hear the tone or how many hugs a day they should have or what is one of my children want to be hugged lots and the other one doesn't want to be hugged at all. What am I doing wrong as a parent or right as a parent? I don't know. We never stop to think, oh, it's just their biology. They're both different. I'm not doing anything wrong at all. They just need different things. They have different hormones, different needs, different things along the way. And that can be supported psychologically as well as biologically. And that's a really, really empowering discovery that we made along the way is biology plays a huge, huge part in the conversation where we just didn't realize that before, because I believe that, you know, for many, many years ago, we've studied a lot of the, the history of, of this, you know, the biotypology and many different things that we look at. This was actually how we practiced medicine hundreds and hundreds of years ago. In fact, in the 1600s, we actually practiced, this is in Italy specifically, they practiced medicine, the whole of the country was based on biotypology. So the equivalent of that would be, imagine if um, President Biden just said, hey guys, as of Monday, we're not doing medicine at all with how we do it right now. When somebody walks in, we're gonna get a tape measure out. The doctor is gonna measure your, the circumference of your head, they're gonna measure your neck, they're gonna measure your finger length, they're gonna measure your wrists and measure your ankles and measure your waist. And then you go through that process and they're actually gonna look at correlations to see, is there different shapes and sizes of bodies that actually have higher risks of diseases and is there shapes and sizes of body that dictate different functions in somebody's organ health or somebody's physiological states or even their mental health and the way their brain works and the answer is yes and they actually mapped all of this out in the 1600s and they practiced medicine at the hospitals in government across the board in italy in the 1600s this is how medicine was practiced because they didn't have the same you know mri and blood tests in the way that we do today they looked at correlations with what was going on and so this is actually a lot of ancient wisdom that's sort of circling back around again to say how we look is actually really powerful. There's a lot of insights medically about what actually tells us about what's going on. So if I have striations on my fingernails, I might be deficient in zinc. If I have white spots, I might be deficient wait, wait, in calcium. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait. If, if, I have my, if I have my ear lobe attached to my head and a crease in it, I have a different tissue collagen quality that might put me at high risk of heart disease. These are all medical facts and not in isolation, but all in combination. It's very, very interesting to see how much power we have in the, our expression or our gene expression, which is our phenotype, how we look uh, in that information, that understanding. And so anyway, this is a, a, a big, long story to say that you're right, right on the money, Jan, going back to the kids. So we put the kids in the middle and said, OK, how do we help our young, amazing humans, our little humans that are here about to grow up? And we said, OK, well, there's influence here. From the parents yes but there's also the parents that we never think about which is actually our teachers at school because most of us drop our kids off at school and they go and get parented you know we get them out of bed you know they're a little bit grumpy get them fed get them get them clothed and off they go to school and we forget that they get parented by somebody else throughout the most of their optimal day before they come home and we you know go through and feed them and play with them a little bit and then put them to bed and go do that the next day there's another whole part of the education process that we've forgotten about. It's called our teachers and our educators. And so we said, this has to be in sync for at home and at school. And so we looked at doing, and we, we actually set up and we're running these days parenting courses to help unique, uh, to help parents understand the unique children and the sort of foods they need, the, the activity, their sleep schedules, the screen time, um, the way that their mind works, the way they perceive the world, their hormones, their risks of stresses their predisposition to disease states at young ages very very powerful information to help uh, give this data to parents to be able to manage that but also at schools to support them in their learning and their growth and their evolution and development and also keeping them in track with their behavior in a really powerful way so they can actually learn and evolve into the amazing young humans they're becoming so we've we really looked at putting the kids in the middle the parents at one side the schools at the other and helping focus on the kids to to put them at the core to really solve them problems of the future that haven't even come along yet but uh, as we learn as adults there's a lot of the things from our childhood that we bring forward and that we usually pass on to our kids and if we can help solve that problem I think that's going to go a long way to to a healthy and happier future for all of us this is amazing to me uh, and and you know you really piqued my interest when uh, we started talking about relationships and you started talking about you know your physical body and I, you know, and I thought, wait a minute, what? <laughs> uh, 
I, I know there's like with uh, some physical bodies, so to speak, uh, you are prone to certain uh, uh, ailments, but I always look not as like internal like diabetes or anything like that, but I know most tall people, including me, uh, we end up having trouble with our knees, you know, and uh, and most of the tall people I know have trouble with it, you know, as they get older, trouble with their knees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I could see that. But to scan me on the outside and say, OK, um, because of your physiological way you look, the way you're built, your head, your eyes, your, this that that we can say that uh, you are prone to whatever. And so now, at, well, here, first of all, a question came in. I don't want to, uh, I get on my own <laughs> tangent and forget about my audience. But here's a question that came in. Will A, because you talked about AI, and when you talked about What's it? Shay? Shay, yes. Shay, AI, and that is using AI uh, with the smartphone. And this question says, will AI take the place of doctors during surgeries? Or would you even have to have surgeries? But anyway, yeah. So the answer is it already is taking, taking that role and playing that role. And so they've had robotic surgeries that have been around for about a decade already. And most of them started with assistive uh, robotic surgery so that the uh, doctor or the specialist would actually be the one controlling the robot, but it actually replaced the, the actual doctor doing the surgeries. They did this a lot with prostate yeah. cancer, for example, taking the prostate out, prostatectomies, where they'll actually use the robots to go in. And, and so the, the surgeon will have hand controls that are there, but the robot will do the actual surgery itself. And that minimizes the risk of infection, minimizes the risk of um, like any inaccuracies that might happen. So we've been using technology for quite a long time already, and it's actually out at the point now where there is robotic automated surgeries that are happening. So um, this I is think something that's else. what this person meant, uh, like uh, not with a doctor, you know, controlling it, but you know, with it's you just say just okay, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then the robot goes in there and does its thing. Well. It's coming. We're, we're, we're not quite at that point just yet, but it's not too far away around the corner. I think it'll be quite commonplace in another, I think it's, we're probably about 15 years away probably from it being commonplace, but um, it's definitely happening more and more regularly. This technology is being very, very focused on. There's a lot of money being invested into this area. So yes, there's some exciting things that are coming in this space for sure. Okay, here's another question. <laughs> this person says, we saw the movie Terminator. With no projected regulations, are we heading in that direction? That's a great question. Actually, it's a question that many people are exploring at the moment. And in fact, the largest and smartest minds in artificial intelligence are all meeting about that exact topic right now is, do we need to be putting into to place some controls, some regulations that are here? And how do we actually avoid having you know, AI take over us in the future? It's something that we've you know, joke about and we've watched movies about. That we're actually on the verge of something fairly serious that the people the highest and smartest people in the world are realizing this is a serious conversation and it needs to be addressed and people need to meet about it and create rules and regulations around this so it's very difficult right now because ai is such a new thing it's very it's it's impossible to regulate right now um people are the government's are trying to figure out how do we regulate this but uh, there's not even enough consensus yet for people to even understand how it's working let alone how to regulate it um, and the other problem that we're finding is that AI is such a, it's such a boom that lots of people are saying, wow, I can make lots of money off of this. Let me go and try and build this in AI and this in AI. And so people are driven by money, not by the best interests of humanity. And the downsides or the risks of AI is that they do have a mind of their own as they get going. So I think it's an interesting time. I think we all need to come together to solve that problem. And we should be having some open discussions about that at the highest level. Uh, to be aware of what's possible. So yeah, I'm not on the doom and gloom bandwagon, but I do understand it's actually a, a serious legitimate risk that we should be discussing and and putting some uh, some things into place. For us, we approach this as tech for good. So we're all about the positive impact that technology can have. There's some incredible things that can be done with technology 
right now we're saving lives, we're reducing and reversing you know, major chronic diseases, some that are irreversible and have been previously thought to be irreversible with technology and AI. We're helping kids understand themselves. We're having families and, and kids come together in ways they never have before. Just incredibly powerful things that we're seeing and witnessing uh, in the uh, in the atmosphere out there with all the people that get to engage in this. So there's a lot of, and there's so much to gain for humanity and uh, in the field that we'll talk about very soon here, and Jan, or maybe this is a little segue into it with the relationships and communications, we found when we got into the kids and learning about the kids that when we understand and we need to understand more inherently their behaviour and their learning, and this is literally inherent in kids, it's amazing how their biology can tell us immediately about how they're going to learn and how they're going to behave. This is without them even opening their mouth. This is us without them ever meeting their parents. And this is us having no idea what their scorecard has been at school or not been at school. So these are really interesting conversations to say, well, hang on. I know we've talked a lot about psychology <laughs> along the way and you know, how our you know, journey affects us as we get older, but how is it that we can actually predict this stuff very, very accurately without even understanding about their psychology? And that was really interesting for us as we went. Wow, this is it's, it's really awesome. It's it's mind blowing. <laughs> it it really really is. So Matt, I've got to take a couple of commercials. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to continue this conversation uh, when we come back. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, this is it's 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 amazing. It's eye opening. Um, I got a few more questions that are coming in, but don't go away. We shall be right back after these few commercials. Something here, I wanted to read it a quote that I love. If you have a body, you have a purpose. 
is to be who you came to be. Let's talk about that. <laughs> How is being a health futurist and all what you do going to help us with that? So there's so, been some interesting things that I've seen and been shown over the years, Jan. And I think probably the most important thing to realize is the perspective of who we are and why we're here. And I think that helps drive a lot of our daily lives if we can live in that space and helps us not be in fear or suffering, but helps us actually live a life of you know joy and purpose and, and, uh, and fulfillment. And so I saw this vision and this really clear understanding once about the fact that every major religion believes that there is something greater than the human body, greater than this sack of skin that we live in. And this is something that uh, we you know, refer to as spirit. And whichever your belief system is or religion, there's, there's no issues, there's no challenges in this conversation, just that we all believe there's something greater than us. And that's something that, you know, when our body, our physical body dies, our spirit continues on. And whether, depending on the belief system or religion, you go to heaven or hell or you reincarnated or whatever that might be, but the fact is that there's something that carries on after the physical body dies, which then begs the question to say, well, that's something that spirit must come in when the physical body is born to be able to then be here and then leave when it dies. So that's interesting. And imagine if we are here as spirit with this spiritual purpose, something greater than you know, who we are in this human body, this thing that's greater than us. If we have a purpose and we have an understanding and a reason for coming down into a body, then we're going to pick a body that's going to actually be able to deliver on whatever our purpose is so if for example we came down or jan if you came down to be a marathon runner that was your purpose you and i up, up wherever we're floating around as spirit and i say hey jan what are you up to today and you're like oh Matt, i'm heading down to earth i'm gonna i'm gonna go and inhabit a body i was like that's amazing i am too that's fantastic what are you what are you doing when you're down there and you said oh i gotta go i'll tell you when we get down there i said okay well no worries i'll see you down there and so you choose a body if you came down and your purpose as a spirit your purpose or spiritual purpose was to be a marathon runner you're going to pick a body that's tall and thin and lean that can run all day. Now, if your your purpose or spiritual purpose was to be a weightlifter, you're going to pick a big body with big bones, big muscles to be able to you know, pull cars up hills and all these sorts of things that you do. And so this um, concept was shown to me very clearly that as spirit, we choose a body or a biological vessel that has the capacity to deliver on whatever our purpose is. I'll say that one more time. So our, our biological vessel has the capacity to deliver on our spiritual purpose. And so this is a really interesting concept to say, oh, wow, there must be, if that's, the, if that's the case, there must be clues or keys in our biology to help us understand what our spiritual purpose is because we picked this vessel to do whatever it is that we're here to do. And most of us don't really know what we're here to do or don't even ever figure it out probably, but some of us are very interested in our purpose and really drawn to finding out what that is and discovering that. And so we went and said about trying to do quantification and science experiments around can we find clues and keys in our body to help us understand that in a greater way. And that kind of feeds into what we found scientifically and everything that we do is evidence-based. We found a lot of the interesting physiologic, physiological um, functioning that happened inside of our body that was there that was very quantifiable with our body shape and size and being able to reproduce or replicate and predict uh, different things like embryology as a science that predicts how you develop over life and how your organs develop in all the different shapes and sizes of you from a, a small child into the human that you are adult today and we're able to, to scan you now and then make predictions about what you look like as you were younger to be able to equal who you are today and so that led us into a really interesting understanding coming back to, to kids and to communication is when we understand about that there's some inherent ways that you as a young child needs to learn because your brain is wired different, your body's wired different, that's different to the person next to you in class, that's different to the person next to them in class. Like, well, that's really interesting. So that means that if they learn differently, they need to hear things differently or see things differently or understand things differently, which means that the communication method has to be different, that maybe we need to communicate visually with drawing on the board. Somebody else needs to to be communicated with a you know, kinesthetic feeling and touch and someone else needs to hear these things in auditory fashion. And so that got us thinking a lot about saying, well, that's really interesting. If, if you learn in different ways, you need communication in different ways. Mm -hmm. And it's so fascinating what we found is it's not just in, when we're kids, but this actually extends all the way through our adult life that we have this inherent way that we actually engage and communicate with people. This is based on how we learn when we're younger and the, the actual biological wiring. 
And so what we're able to do is extrapolate how that actually works as you get older. And now we're able to actually tell, uh, based on, a again, a photo scan, we have uh, a, a, the science of, of the phenotypology. And your phenotype is, is kind of your genes as they get expressed equals your phenotype. And your phenotype is just how you look in the mirror. It's how you look and how you think when you look in the mirror is more accurate. So as I see you on the, this video here, Jan, that's, I'm looking at your phenotype right now. Um, so this is the phenotype that's there. And we're able to understand now about someone's phenotype, how they learnt when they were a child, how they actually needed to have communication happen, how they need to communicate with others, and how they do communicate with others. And one of the things that, that I had shared, I remember when we had, had our conversation in Florida, was um, let me just tell you about you and, and your goddaughter because I'd never met you before. We'd never talked apart from saying hi. And and uh, I shared with you about who you were and I shared with, um, with her about who she was with Laurie. And uh, and shared ex like really clearly about that. And here's where you here's where you guys are going to communicate really well. Or here's the challenges you might find and how that works. And I'd never opened my my mouth to to, to ask you about hey, how was your childhood or how did your par how are your parents growing up or did you have trauma? None of that at all. It was just based on biology on how you look. I was able to tell this, and I've been doing this for many many years, so I can look at someone and just tell that straight away. This is something I'm able to tell that very clearly. But it's it helps us understand about the communication. And how we often and almost always just communicate thinking that everybody else is the same as us so how we want to hear or need to hear something we communicate with other people this way thinking that that's how they need to hear that or how they're going to hear that most of the time we don't realize that people other people hear things differently or receive things differently and that's often where most of our communication issues come in which then led us to the conversation around relationships which is what we've explored most extensively about the last five or six years which is biological determinants around relationships and communication is the underpinning essence of how successful a relationship is, as you know. So um, this is something that uh, we can explore a bit now, but it's it's very interesting to know that that's actually predictable through biology without anyone opening their mouth, without even understanding anyone's psychology. It's It really is mind-blowing, which is why we we got excited about uh, this collaboration and conversation. So uh, anyway, I just, I'll, I'll pause there for a minute, Tim. I was going to say two things. Boy, that would help uh, finding uh, a soulmate. <laughs> you, you know, that's no, that I, I, you know, that kind of went through my head. Like, wow, okay. And then the other thing, when you were talking about children, that would help so much in education. Be, I was a special education teacher, and so therefore I had children in my classroom. You know, some were kinesthetic, some were visual, some were were uh auditory and and when you when we would see them they they would be so frustrated because and and considered you know unintelligent or whatever uh be because they learned differently and in education regular education it's like this is the book everybody read this answer these questions whatever you know and and it would take a while before the child was labeled special when the child's not really special the child just learns and communicates differently we only have a few minutes to go and there and two more questions came in okay uh how much input will patients have regarding ai or will the future be forced on them for treatment? <laughs> well, I believe if, if everything we're working on goes well, then the patient will always be in control of everything. So uh, we believe that everybody has the, the birthright to actually understand about their health, to know about their health, to be guided with their health and supported with their health. And that's what we're creating in the world. Um, I really, really hope that we're never at a point where somebody else will make that choice for us. Uh, but I believe that the AI can support us in our own personal decisions to help us receive what we need to support us in our, our optimal health at that time or to help assist us if we're helping to navigate a state of disease at that time. Okay. And the next question here is, uh, what is the biggest threat in the future as far as AI is concerned? Interesting enough, I think the biggest threat is humans. Um, I think <laughs> okay. the way that uh, <laughs> humans are the ones who program the AI and I really believe that if we can learn from the things that have evolved over the last few decades, 
I mean, even like when I was born and when I traveled around, I traveled around the world for a year the first time, uh, I was handwriting letters to send back to people that I met along the way. This is in my lifetime. And ever since then, we've had the internet. The internet wasn't even created when I first traveled around. This is, a, you know, we've seen the internet come, we've seen the rise, we've seen the rise of social media. And I think if we can learn this time around as AI starts to become at the forefront, uh, that we really want to make smart decisions for humanity now, not make decisions such as, you know, the Facebooks and the Twitters and all the things that are out there that got bad press because they were built for money. They were built to make money. They were, had these great ideas. No one ever, ever thought about the yeah. the distraught the destruction that can happen with mental health with loneliness with suicides no yeah. one ever considered that we're a couple of kids in a garage making some technology that was it and we're seeing the same now with ai kids in garages starting businesses trying to make money with no care or even awareness at all about what the ramifications might be so i'm really hopeful that we can have those conversations now that can be really positive for people in the future um, i really hope if you're interested come and check out the work we do and reach out to us at Shade Up AI because we're doing some really, really amazing things and trying to support things in a tech for good way. And I really hope that we can get there. So as long as as humans, we can make good good choices together, I really feel like we're, we're looking good for the future. So now, um, only a few minutes, you have circles and you have retreats and you have something called the, uh, let's see, what the mystery, was the mystery school. Explain to us this. Tell me about your circles. Tell me about your re retreats. Tell tell us. Yeah. Okay. So we have been running transformational retreats for about the last 15 years. Um, we, uh, I mentioned a little bit before about gifts and abilities. We have amazing healers that are part of a journey. So we have the science and medicine world. Where we have doctors and, and health professionals that look after. So dietitians, psychologists, etc. look after people in the traditional way. And we have very alternative people that come in from a healing aspect and we've been having incredible results. In fact, we have people that come with cancer, MS, Parkinson's, fibromyalgia that come with that state of disease and leave seven days later without it. Um, so we've had incredible Wait retreats. It's been phenomenal. This is, we've been running, running these for, yeah, almost 15 years, I'd say. And uh, so we run four of those a year. So if, the, if you're listening to this, precision medicine is very powerful and the understanding about body, mind, and spirit on these levels is very, very powerful. So, um, yeah, if anyone's interested or in a position for that, please reach out and we'd love to share more with you about those. Uh, our circles are programs to support people, and this is where you are if it's on your physical journey for health, if it's on a mental uh, journey that you're experiencing or even on a spiritual journey, we have circles with people that actually engage in those to work with each other to evolve in their journey on, on the body, mind, and spirit. And the Mystery School is an interesting space where we have uh, the miraculous healings that uh, that happen, and these happen quite a lot. We're actually in the process at the moment of recording a documentary uh, for Netflix about that, uh, which is going to be released. I can't say when, but uh, that's uh, something that's going to be quite interesting to show the power of miraculous healing, where this can happen literally and instantly within you know less than sixty seconds for people that you would never ever believe with your own eyes could be possible. And uh, we have a mystery school that's about people who are interested and intrigued in that that feel like they have gifts and abilities, that they're sort of uncovering this, exploring this for the first time, that's a way where they can plug in and get support from an international community of people just like them. So uh, if any of that uh, is interest of interest or resonates, please reach out. We'd love to share more about that with you. And, and uh, yeah, very excited about the work we're able to do. And, and Jan, really appreciative of this conversation today. So thank you so much. Yes, and, and, and wow, just to, to know that people who come to your retreats and um, your circles, the fact that they can be healed, that there's miraculous healing going on. That, that is so wonderful. Matt, I look forward to people we're going to be collaborating on because this is on, on relationships and your biological makeup. Because I never thought about it. I always think, you know, heart and head, but never biology matt thank you so much i know you got to catch a flight uh to 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 go all over the world and uh uh i i really 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 thank you so very very much for sharing uh your time with me and uh, uh and all this wonderful amazing information i it, it's 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 really I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm tongue tied. <laughs> it's, it's really amazing. It's really incredible. And you are a beautiful soul. 
you know, that's why I'm attracted to you, you know, yes. So you take care, be careful, and uh, en enjoy your, your flights from here, there, and everywhere. Thank you so much, Jan. I really appreciate you, and I'm excited to collaborate to, on the biology and psychology piece for relationships in the future. So watch this space, and again, thank you for your time, and thanks to everyone who dialed in to listen to this, and really appreciate it. And I hope you can get out and check out Shader AI and, and learn more and become intrigued and curious about where you're at in your journey and, and to help yourself and then help others on their journey. So thank you again, Dr. Jan. really appreciate you. All right. You take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow, this is this was really, 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 really great. And I'm going to put um, his AI so that you can see it. H A E. Okay, I gotta make sure I spell it right. So I want to put it down here so you can see it's S H A E. Make sure it's right, Janice. S H A E. S H A. -E. E dot A dot I. So let me let me make sure because you know me, I'll type something. I'm thinking that okay, that's the way it is, and that's oh okay, I got it right. All right, let so so you so everyone can see this. I'm not even going to scroll it. I'm just going to create a big banner so you can write this down and you can. Go onto your internet and look up Shay.ai. And I'm going to keep running this long bottom of the screen so you all don't say, oh, well, that was too quick. I didn't see it. I didn't tell you. You took it down too quick. So I'm leaving it up there so you can see it. So um, I'm going to give you my relationship tip for this evening. And um, with two ends. Oh, you know what? I, you know, I thought I typed two ends. You're right, Matt. It's two ends. You know what happens? I type too fast sometimes. And let me fix this doggone banner. Uh, where is it, people? Where is his, where is his, here it is. I got to change it. Two ends. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me put this other end here. Okay, now. Now. There you go. <laughs> So if you were trying to go on mattreeman.com and you couldn't go, now you know why. <laughs> because it's two ends. So anyway, uh, it, this has been wonderful. And I want to thank everyone who's watching and who submitted questions. So let me give my relationship tip for you today. If you've been watching my lives, you know I've been talking about having that relationship with yourself. So let me say this to you. Self-awareness is the foundation. So now begin by understanding who you are. I asked someone that a couple of weeks ago. Who are you? Tell me who you are. And they told me what they did. But who are you? Not what you do, not your career, not are you someone's daughter, someone's mother, or you're a secretary or whatever. Who are you? So now regular self-reflection, whether through journaling, meditation, or just quiet con contemplation can help you uncover your desires, your fears, your strengths, and areas of growth. So remember, self-awareness and the relationship with yourself is one of the most important relationships that you can have because you know what if you can't relate to anyone to yourself you really have a difficult time relating to anybody so um i want to thank all of you again for um viewing and all of your questions again we'll see you again next week 
with another wonderful, informational, valuable guest. So go to Shay, S-H-A-E dot A-I. All righty. So I will see you again next week, next Thursday, same time, same place. Take care. Have a beautiful, blessed rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye.